Hey, what's up everybody? Today I am sitting inside a great operating system for the Raspberry Pi 4. This is Twister OS. One of the greatest operating systems that I have tested so far. I know I have tested a lot and Twister OS is one of the greatest. So let's get to work. I am fully aware that I get super excited about any new OS that can run on a Raspberry Pi. So I can't help not being amazed again with another OS that gave me all the satisfaction that I wanted from the Raspberry Pi. I am now placing Twister OS amongst the top 3 best operating systems for the Raspberry Pi. As a matter of fact, Twister is now my daily driver OS. I'm going to retire Raspberry Pi OS, which is previously known as Raspbian. I'm going to retire it for the moment and use Twister OS for my Plex Media server and for live monitoring of my home video surveillance. Stick around to see what else I was able to do on Twister OS. As a product, Twister OS comes preloaded with a bunch of features and software, not to mention the look and feel of it. It is a sexy operating system. If the default theme is not your style, you have six other themes that you can choose from. I like iRasbian and that is what I'm using here. As you go through the menu, you will see a plethora of applications that you normally have to spend hours waiting to download and install on other Linux operating systems. Looking at their accessories, you will see Balloon Etcher, PyCast, and so much more. And their games, you have enough to get started. And it even has Wine configuration and Wine desktop. What else can you ask for? It just seems like Twister can read my mind. They have most of the things that I normally want in the order that I want them in. I can't go over every item, but you see my point. Now, as always, I am going to enable camera, SSH, and VNC. Now changing the theme back to iRasbian. And I will go ahead and hide all the menu items that I'm not going to be using. Okay, here we go. Checking out Netflix. Seems like it's working and it works well as a matter of fact. As it is the tradition, I am going to jump on YouTube and see how well it runs. The video that I picked is at 1080 at 60 frames per second. All the operating systems that I tested so far on a Raspberry Pi 4 did not do too well with 60 frames per second. I'm doing this on purpose to show you how well it runs on Twister OS. You can see a little bit of hesitation, however it runs, you know if it can run 60 frames per second it shouldn't have any problems with 30 frames per second and I did try it and it did actually do very 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 well. Ok now for some geeky stuff. What I am going to do next is install a complete professional PBX telephone system with extensions, video calling, chat and so much more. You can do all this with a little Raspberry Pi, a cell phone or a tablet. You can also configure a VoIP phone if you have one to work with. I found out about this project through Network Chuck on YouTube. Make sure you check out his channel if you are interested in some more cool geeky stuff. The software that I'm using is provided by a company called 3CX. I am not sponsored or affiliated with 3CX. I put a link in the description at the bottom for individuals who would like to find out more about 3CX services. Alright, now let's get going.
To get started, type in this link in terminal to start the download. We'll go with one, final. Okay, now sit back and wait a few minutes. Select one to use a web browser. You can copy the IP address displayed on your screen or memorize it. Yours will obviously be different than mine. It is basically your Raspberry Pi IP address using port 5015. Go ahead and open Chromium and enter that IP address followed by port 5015. The first thing you will need to do is enter your license key. To get your license key, click on this link to be directed to the registration page. Enter your information to register. Your license key will show under my subscription. Copy and paste and hit next. Set up a username and password. Make sure you remember it. You will need this to log in later on. Click next. Here you will see your public IP address. Leave it selected. Hit next. If you know you have a static IP address, leave it checked. If you are like me and you have a dynamic IP address, check it. If you are not sure, keep in mind that most of home users will have a dynamic IP address. You don't have to change anything here unless you want to. Hit next. Leave it as local IP. Again, most home users should choose that unless they have a managed DNS. Next, pick the number of digits that you want, your time zone, enter your preferred extension number for the operator and voicemail, name and email, next, I'm in North America, next, language is English for me, pick your preferred language, hit next, and voila. Copy and save this and proceed to the next step. Now you can open up a new web browser and enter your Raspberry Pi IP address followed by 5001. If you have changed your port number from 5001 to something else, make sure you use that port number. If you get this page, click proceed. Sign in with the username and password you recently created. You will receive multiple emails with usernames and password that were created for you. They are for your web portal. Do not enter them here. This is your username and password, the ones that you created. You will be directed to this beautiful dashboard. Now let's get straight to work and create some extensions. Click add, enter information specific to that extension. This QR code is what you will scan with your phone or tablet after downloading the app. Simply download 3CX app and scan it. There is no additional configuration required on your phone. Now I'm just going to add some more extensions. All right, so what we have here is we have two phones and a tablet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first make a call from one phone to the other one. And after doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and add the tablet to the conference. That way we have a conference call. After doing that, I will go ahead and hang up one of the phones and make a video call from the phone to the tablet and see how that works out. All right, let's get started. All right, um, the tablet is 4053. I'm going to call Dave 4051, 4051, call. There we go. Answer. There we go. Hello, 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 hello. All right, so now we can go ahead and add the yes to the conference. We can do that by tapping on conference here. Okay. <laughs> you even have the hold music. This is badass. All right. Diaz is 4050. Call. 
There we go. He has it on the conference. This is beautiful. Love this. <laughs> and again, keep in mind this is this is all handled by the Raspberry Pi. This is not something that's handled on the web or anything. Um, it's all done and it does not take a lot of resources from your Raspberry Pi. It barely uses anything. I mean, you can do anything else. This is this happens in the background and you won't even notice it. So what I'm going to do now is uh, let me go ahead and make a video call so you guys can see how that how that looks. Uh, OK, we're calling Dave 4051. Call. All right. Dave is answering. So we can do a video. Here you go. Wait for it. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I like it. I don't know what to do with it, but I'm going to think of something. So fast forward 24 hours later, after annoying the heck out of my wife, I decided to put this 3CX application to some great use. So I decided to make a front door DIY video intercom. That way I can see and talk to whoever is at the door. This is my next project. Stay tuned to see how I did it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.